While brainstorming ideas for new videos, I often stumbled across stunning 3D circular image galleries. But honestly, I always avoided them because they looked really complex, especially due to that tricky curving distortion. However, now that we have been diving into 3JS, those once intimidating layouts feel much more approachable. So I decided to give it a shot and recreate a similar 3D image gallery. You can see it features a cylindrical layout that rotates as you scroll. This is just a starting point. You can customize it further by tweaking properties like the radius, image size, vertical spacing and more to match your own creative vision. In today's video, I'll walk you through how to build this cool 3D image gallery using HTML, CSS and 3JS, complete with smooth scrolling rotation. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And if you want to unlock the source code, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. The HTML for this project is pretty minimal. To avoid the page looking too empty, I have added a simple navbar and a footer. The navbar is divided into two columns, each containing some placeholder text for now. Similarly, the footer includes a couple of paragraph elements with some basic dummy text. And that's all we need for the HTML structure. Now let's move on to the CSS. To start, I've reset the default margins, paddings and set box sizing to border box for consistent styling across the elements. For the base styles, the HTML and body are set to a full viewport width with an extended height of 500 viewport height to allow for scrolling. The canvas is positioned as fixed, so it stays in place while the page scrolls, covering the entire viewport. For the nav, I positioned it at the top, spanning the full width and styled it with flexbox for a clean two column layout. The mix blend mode is set to difference to make it stand out against the background dynamically. Each column is styled to distribute content evenly with some alignment tweaks like flexbox for the first column and text align is set to right for the second. The text styles include uppercase transformation, a bold font, and a custom font family with a white color for contrast. The footer mirrors the navbar but is positioned at the bottom, styled similarly to maintain visual consistency. Lastly, there are custom styles for the Lenny Smooth Scroll library to handle scroll behavior effectively, ensuring smooth interactions without breaking the experience. And that's it for the CSS. Let's move on to the JavaScript now. Let's get started by setting up the foundation of our 3D image gallery. The first step is to create a scene. In 3JS, the scene acts as a container where all our 3D objects, lights and cameras will live. Next, we need a camera to view our scene. We'll use a perspective camera which mimics how our eyes perceive the world. To display everything on the screen, we need a renderer. Here, we are using the WebGL renderer. When initializing the renderer, we enable anti-aliasing for smoother edges and set the alpha to true so we can make parts of the scene transparent as needed. To ensure high quality rendering across different devices, we will set the pixel ratio. We also set the size of the renderer to match the width and height of the browser window. Next, we specify a background color using set clear color will make it transparent. Finally, we append the renderer's canvas to the body of our HTML. This canvas is where all magic happens and it's what we'll see in the browser. Finally, we'll set camera's Z position to 12 to move it away from the center of the scene. The Y position is set to 0 so it stays centered vertically. Next, let's add some light to our scene so we can see our objects. Here, we are using ambient light. We set its color to pure white and its intensity to 1 making it bright enough to see everything clearly. Then we add this light to the scene. Next, we create a group for our gallery items. Groups in 3JS acts like containers allowing us to manage multiple objects as a single unit. Now let's create the cylinder that will form the base layout of our gallery. The radius at the top and bottom of the cylinder is set to 6. The height is 30, making it tall enough to hold multiple sections of images. The segments are 30, which determine how smooth the cylinder appears. 
Next, we define the material for the cylinder. We set its color to white. Make it transparent since we don't want the cylinder to be visible. And set the side to double side so both the inside and outside of the cylinder are rendered. Once the geometry and material are ready, we combine them into a mesh. The cylinder itself won't be visible, but it will act as a framework to position our images along its curved surface. Now let's prepare for adding images. For that, we'll use a texture loader which allows us to load images into the scene as textures. To keep things dynamic, we define a small utility function called getRandomImageNumber. It generates a random number between 1 and 50, which we'll use later to fetch a random image from our assets folder. To display images in our 3D gallery, we need to load them as textures. For that, we use the load image texture function, which returns a promise. We use the texture loader to load an image. Once the texture is loaded, we set some properties to improve the quality. Finally, we resolve the promise with the loaded texture, allowing us to use it later. Now let's create the actual curved planes that will hold the images. This part involves a bit of math, but I'll try to break it down for you step by step. We use buffer geometry to create a custom geometry. This gives us full control over the shape and layout of the plane. We calculate the positions of the vertices using loops. The number of horizontal and vertical segments is calculated based on the width, height and radius. For each vertex, we calculate its position using trigonometry functions. To properly map textures onto the geometry, we calculate UV coordinates for each vertex. These define how the texture wraps around the surface. The faces of the geometry by connecting vertices using indices. Each pair of triangles forms a rectangular face. Once all vertices, UVs and indices are calculated, we set them as attributes of the geometry. Finally, we compute vertex normals, which are essential for proper lighting and shading. By end of this function, we have a curved plane that matches the cylindrical layout of our gallery. Now let's populate our gallery with the blocks. These blocks will be placed in a cylindrical layout and will create multiple vertical sections with several blocks in each. We start by defining a few constants for the layout like number of vertical sections, number of blocks in each section and vertical spacing. We also calculate some additional values. Total block height is the total height of all the vertical sections combined. Height buffer is a small gap added above and below the blocks to prevent them from being tightly packed against the cylinder edges. Start Y is the starting vertical position for the first block. Finally, we define section angle which is the angle between each block in a section. The create block function is responsible for creating and positioning individual blocks. Each block starts with a curved plane geometry. We give it a width of 5, a height of 3 and a radius of 6. Next, we load a random texture. Then, the material is created with the texture mapped onto it. Next, we calculate the block's vertical position by adding the base y coordinate to a small random offset to make the layout less rigid. To place the block at the correct angle around the cylinder, we calculate a base angle using section angle and add a random offset for variation.
The block is then added to a group which acts as a container for positioning and rotation. Then we create the initialize blocks function that loops through all the sections and blocks, creating and adding them to the gallery group. For each vertical section, we calculate its base y coordinate using start y and the section's index multiplied by vertical spacing. For each block, we call the create block function, which returns a fully positioned block container. We then add it to the gallery group and push it to the blocks array for reference. To achieve smooth scrolling, we are using Lenis, a lightweight library for scroll handling. We initialize it with auto ref set to true. We also define some key variables. Next, we set up an event listener for the scroll using Lenis on scroll method. Whenever the user scrolls, we update the current scroll variable with the current page offset. The scroll velocity is used to calculate the rotation speed, ensuring the gallery rotation responds dynamically to how fast the user scrolls. The animate function is where everything comes together. This function runs continuously using request animation frame. We calculate the fraction of the page that has been scrolled by dividing current scroll by total scroll. Using the scroll fraction, we calculate the target Y position for the camera. This ensures that the camera smoothly follows the vertical scroll position, keeping the gallery sections in view. We update the gallery's rotation along the Y axis. The rotation speed combines the base rotation speed with the dynamic rotation speed, which gets progressively smaller after scrolling stops, creating a deacceleration effect. Finally, we use render method to draw the updated scene in the browser. At the end of the script, we call initialize blocks function to populate the gallery and then the animate function to kick off the continuous animation loop. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.